Look away unto Jesus and say, Lord, because you have died on that cross, I am capable of receiving everything that cross has purchased for me. And sometimes God speaks over us and we're not willing to listen to wisdom. All of this is available to us through all of this good, awesome kingdom glories. Things. There are paradigms in our nation and our community that must be broken. There are ideas, philosophies that are taken as truth which are not truth. There are many doctrines in the Christian church which are not doctrines of God, but they are, they are um, doctrines of demons, doctrines of men. And I hate to tell you, it's in the majority of houses. I'm not against any house, I'm not. Uh, um, anything that we've ever taught wrong through the years, I've gotten it, weeded it out, and taken it out. Whatever God shows in the future, we're going to rip that out also. We're going to com- be converted more and more and more to the truth of God. Now, you might say, well, gosh, as a minister, you're changing. These other churches, they've been 200 years preaching the same thing. They're stronger than you. No, it's called stuck in the mud. I'm telling you. A lot of churches are stuck in the mud. We used to be stuck in the mud. We are not stuck in the mud. We are calling out to God for the revelation of his word to descend upon us over and over and over to persuade us deeper and deeper and deeper so we can see clearer and clearer and clearer. And so, um, do you know, it's funny. It's really funny because I sometimes talk to certain uh, leaders and people that are out in different countries and different places as well as in our country and even in our community. And they'll say, oh, we're just trusting God for the revival. We're just believing God for the breakthrough. I says, and your grandfather did, and his. And either God is crippled with arthritis and can't move fast enough to answer your prayers, or you're praying amiss. Something's being asked for wrong. And you're saying, should we not pray for these things? No. We should not pray for these things. We are the revival. And that's the problem. When you're calling out to God for something that you are, then you're asking him amiss. Rather, say, Lord, grant us boldness that we may stand up in Christ Jesus and become proclaimers of the truth of your word, following with signs, wonders, and miracles to testify to the fact that you are with us. Amen. So we are crying out to God. We are God's representatives in the earth. Now I want to address one other thing. The, the Bible says, um, you know, if you will humble yourselves and pray uh, and, and repent of the sins, then I will come and heal your land. Uh, and I want you to know for sure that's not true. You say, how can you contradict the Bible? No, I'm not contradicting the Bible. I want you to know there was a time God told Abraham, kill Isaac. And then there was another time God said, don't kill Isaac, kill the ram. And you have to know the chronological order of the Bible, otherwise you're praying Old Testament prayers in New Testament days. God is not going to heal our land because we repent of the sins of our nation. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. Remember, Israel, the nation, was a theocracy. A theocracy means a nation under God, acknowledging God as the governor, ruler, Lord, over the nation. And therefore, he appointed the king, the the rulers, the leaders, and everything. He appointed his law as the law of the land. It wasn't voting. It wasn't a democracy. It was a theocracy. And if you crossed God, he killed you. Or you would better get a sacrifice quick because his wrath would be kindled against you. And so the whole thing is about offerings and sacrifices, rebellion and disobedience, and then some here and there who cooperated with God the best they could, but even they made mistakes, they had to make offerings and restitution, otherwise they would end up dead. And God's heart was never to be a grouchy, old, miserable God in the sky who kills people. 
He made a garden full of everything we need with peace and love and goodness and soundness. And he put us there. And he says, just don't partake of the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you'll partake of every other tree, you'll be okay. But don't touch that tree. What did they do? Went and did what he said not to do. So this is what it's like. Don't put your face in the barrel of that cannon. So what do you do? You tell kids, don't touch this hot stove. And sometimes humanity learns through pain. Okay. But it never was God's will to bring pain to humanity. Okay. So I want you to know, he had a theocracy until the time appointed of the Father. In the fullness of time, he brought his son, not people who were unsaved, unrighteous, and unholy. His perfect, flawless, gorgeous son, who never violated him once, he brought into the world on behalf of all the miserable us who did everything wrong. To do what? To redeem us who couldn't redeem ourselves so that he could redeem the whole world back to himself. Everyone who has faith in the work he did is saved out of judgment, out of sin, and out of every wicked thing that can ever harm them. In each thing I believe, each thing I accept from Christ delivers me from yet another problem that was present in the world before Christ came. It takes faith to embrace what Jesus successfully achieved for it to count and work in your physical life. Okay, it doesn't, you, Jesus died for the whole world. The whole world is still dead. Jesus died so that they could be made alive. I'm alive. The whole world's not alive. Why? Because I responded by faith to his message. I believed him. And he accounted that to me for righteousness, which lifted me into a status and a state of non-cursed. So awesome. Okay. So it doesn't matter how much a righteous man repents for unrighteous men's sins, it will never save them. Okay. So let me just clarify one last thing about this scripture. If you humble yourselves and pray and repent of your sins, I will heal your land. That was spoken not to you and to me. It was spoken to Israel, the natural nation under the theocracy, whom, the God by whom they were violating. And it was to them under that theocracy, under God's rule, totality, from the clerk's office to the king. From the street sweeper to the palace guard. Everybody was under God. And when the nation went into sin, he said to the nation, if you will humble yourself and repent of your sins, I'll heal your land. And there's many times you can read in the Bible they did it. And then he healed their land. All the foreigners, the, the enemies were all cast out. They rose up. Prosperity started flowing. Goodness started coming. Everything God promised started happening. Then they'd go back into rebellion, and all the enemies would come back, and all the problems would come, and all the pestilences and diseases and sicknesses and difficulties would come. And then he'd say, if you'll repent and humble yourself, I'll heal your land. And then they'd repent, humble themselves, and he'd start healing their land, and they'd come right back up out of it, and they'd rise right back up over every nation again, only do it again. That's not America. That's not any country in Europe. That's not Australia. That is a theocracy. Okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is because of ignorance, we pray the wrong thing. We believe the wrong thing. People cry out for the wrong thing. And a hundred years later, they're still crying out for something that's not coming. Now, um, I graciously, very carefully say this. I one time dared to pray a prayer of faith with a bunch of ministers <laughs> because they were all humbling themselves and praying and repenting of the sins of the nation. And I was like, oh boy. And I mean, there was 20 or 30 pastors praying this rubbish. And I didn't judge them. I just thought, well, they don't understand, and that's okay. Um, but I'm not praying those prayers because I'm not speaking except anything that's, unless it's homologale, I'm not saying it. Right. 
So it says in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 10, if you believe in your heart and homo legeo with your mouth, you'll be saved. From what? Disease, sickness, wrath, lostness, everything. So Jesus said, unless you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will not be saved. But if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. The word confess is not confess. It's homo legeo. It's a Greek word. Homo legeo means more than confess. It's more powerful than confession. People do confessions all the time. They'll confess, 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 and nothing changes. Homo legeo means you identify what he's saying about anything. And then you speak from your heart agreement with him about his heart. When you hum a legale from heart to heart, when you decree what he decrees from your heart, it changes things. Right? If you say things that are not from your heart, they won't change anything. It's just more condemnation. Mm. Hmm. Okay, so, you know, there, so when it came to my turn to pray, I was like, oh boy. Anything I thought of was faith. It was there that I discovered I'm a man of faith. I didn't even know how to dampen down my prayers. I was trying to know how to say things as graciously as I can. But at the end of the day, my heart's going to say, God, you're capable, and I trust you. So I was like, I really prayed low. I know you can't believe that. But I, I did. I didn't get loud. I just said, Father, I just thank you for the blood of Jesus. I might as well have said Satan. Uh, but I said, I thank you. For the blood of Jesus, which has already conquered all our enemies. And I pray that you will work a wonder according to the blood of Jesus in this land. And oh man, I'm telling you, you would have thought I said something terrible. Now I'm telling you, there was good men of God in that room. Bunches of them. I'm not against them. I honor them today. I still love them. I still care about these people. But I'm I'm realizing more and more that Satan has done a fantastic job of duping the church and doctrines. Okay, so I'm going to read you one now. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, if it wasn't so, Paul wouldn't have wrote about it. But he wrote about it in Ephesians chapter 4, and he says in verse uh, uh, 10, he says, He who descended... Uh, is also the one who ascended. Because remember, it says he, you know, he descended into the lowest parts of the earth, right? Yeah. Prior to that. Yeah. Uh, which people don't believe that doctrine either, but we'll skip that one. Uh, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all huh, the heavens, that he might fill all things. Okay, so Jesus descended, right? It says that he died and he went into the earth, but his soul descended into the abyss, into Sheol, into the place of torment. Because your punishment and mine was Sheol, not the grave. The grave was just where the flesh goes. But his soul was cast into the belly of hell. And he laid under the wrath of God on your behalf so that you won't have to. He became sin so that I could become the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Right? And so there he laid in the abyss. It says in Romans chapter 4 and verse 29, it says that he was raised because you and I were justified by what he accomplished. Once he accomplished our justification, he was raised up from the dead. His resurrection proves that we are justified in God's sight according to the work of the blood of Jesus. Wow, that's powerful. So I don't question what he accomplished, I accept it. 
I just accept it. Now, I'm learning how to accept it on a greater level all the time, and I hope you'll join me. Just keep embracing this thing. It grows. Our understanding of it gets bigger. And so he was justified when he, he justified us when we were, he was raised from the dead. And it says, then he ascended on high above all powers. To do what? That he might fill all things. Because the people think, gee, I wonder what's going to happen. What's the end like? All things full of him. <laughs> if you've got a bad doctrine, get rid of it. The end of this world is not a cataclysmic war and a battle of Armageddon where the church is failing so badly that Jesus has to show up and save our butts again. That's not what's going to happen. He is busy for 2,000 years filling the earth with the God kind. If you're born of God, then you are his kind. Now people say, well, that, well, he, he forgave my sins, but I'm not what he is. He's greater than I am. No, you are what he is because the Bible says in Peter, I think it's chapter 2, verse 23, it says that he... You have, you have been born again. You've been birthed again. You've been procreated again. You, I know your mom and dad had you, but it happened again. Yeah. Except this time by the incorruptible seed. This is not a seed from a man that can corrupt and grow old and I get bald and stuff, but I think, no, but I'm born of another seed. And that seed came from God. And that's an incorruptible seed that landed in my spirit and it's been busy growing inside of me. And there's a new creation inside of me. And that man is a ruler. And I am a part of God's plan to fill the earth with the God kind. You are God kind. Do you know that you're a new creation? It says, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, if any man is in Christ, are you in Christ? Yes. Then you're a new species. Yes. You know, if, if you're not going to quote the whole Bible, don't quote some of it, please. So, um, I mean, Abby Olson's my hero. She recently said to a person who was in leadership situation, I'm not accepting anything except the Word of God. That's just your opinion. She said, if you can't show me in the Word, I'm not taking it. Now I can tell you what just happened. She became the instructor to all the other kids. Because that's how you learn. You learn by watching the righteous homologeo with God. She was homo legale. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, I want you to know, she's very respectful. She didn't disrespect anybody. But she made a stand. Now, I was taken to the woodshed for a beating after I prayed my prayer of faith. And the end result was a lot of people started calling me a cult leader. He has bad doctrine. He's well, it's funny that I'm the one quoting the Bible all the time, and people are always quoting doctrines of men. Okay? So let's read it. I'm going to show it to you right now. I'm not out for a fight. I'm in one. <laughs> so Jesus is going to fill the earth with all things, fill all things, right? So where are we going? The whole earth is going to be filled with Christ. So whatever other doctrine you have, please just scrap that. You say, well, maybe these bad things are going to come and happen, and then after that there's going to be a renewal, awakening, or something, or some kind of revival. No, the revival has come. There's no revival coming. There is no revival coming. There's moves of God. I'll give you that. There are things. There are, there are people who open their heart and accommodate God on a huge level, and then God starts moving through that church or through that pastor or through those people, and uh, that happens. And you can see that in the Bible. That's biblical. 
But I'm telling you, that massive revival, that thing that was supposed to change the planet and did has already come. It's here in the midst of us right now. And as long as you keep searching for what you have, you will not hum a gale with God that it has come. I'm in it. I'm not calling for it. I'm a part of it. I don't want it to come. I'm giving it. I'm not asking for it. Either you're the light of the world or you're darkness searching for the light of the world. Which is it? Jesus called his disciples the light of the world. You are the salt. You are the light of the world. Salt and light doesn't cry out for salt and light. I just wish I could be salty. You're not bad. It's pretty salty. I wish I could give off some light. That's pretty bright. If you don't start acknowledging what Christ says about you, you won't be a participant with the outcome. Look, Pastor Chris does does not have a pet peeve about revival. I have truth. I'm not backing off. I'm not backing down. You have false. You got to receive the true. Unless we teach the Bible the way the Bible teaches itself, we will deceive people more and more. And we will continue to cry out for things that are not coming. It's here. Look, I can tell when you know it's here. That prayer meeting is going to be packed. Why? Because you're not waiting anymore to get on board. You are causing what you know to be true to happen. I heard Terry Parks today praying in the prayer room. He says, Lord, why we're here with this legislative body. I almost shot right through the ceiling. I said, oh, God, how long I've waited to hear these words. People who understand we're not calling out to God to do something. We are standing in the earth as God's legislators, as inheritors of the promises of heaven, and we're decreeing the things of God in this earth according to what has been granted to us in Christ. Whatsoever things you bind when you pray, they shall be bound. And I want you to know in the Greek language it says they shall be bound as they already have been in heaven. Now those guys that translated the Bible put, and they shall be bound also in heaven. No! It says in the Greek, they shall be bound as they already have been bound in heaven. Why? Because Jesus took his blood into the heavenly realm, put it on the mercy seat. Revelation chapter 12, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the devil and his angels, and they were kicked out of heaven. Heaven was cleansed. Heaven does not have a rebellion. And now, woe unto you in the earth, for the devil knows his time is short. He's come down with great vengeance. And he did. He came down with great vengeance and started shipwrecking everything and destroying everything. And everything started happening until 70 AD. When he lost his advantage. How? The Jewish nation was replaced by the church age in 70 AD when that first tabernacle was torn down. God then released the spirit in a new level, in a new way. And the way into the most holiest of all was revealed. And the church became the new heaven on earth. Wherever God's people are, the devil can't crush it, can't stop it, because darkness has no power over light. Doctrine matters. Um, hmm. This morning when I was praying, I wasn't saying, please, pretty please, and please overlook my sins. I was saying, let's make war. It was really my attitude. I kind of looked out my house windows and it was foggy out. And I says, well, we already own this, so if you just start showing me more clearly so that I can take possession, I'll help lead your people into claiming and laying hold of what they own. I think that the streets should be full of healers. Miracle workers. 
Look, the Colts are down there doing it. They are. They do. They're fearless. It's just the Christians that are afraid. Sure. Something's got to be wrong with doctrine somewhere yeah. if the Christians are afraid. I mean, when that cult lady was saying, these are the great men of God, these are the great men of God, these are the great men of God, finally Paul got sick of it, he said, you come out of her! And, and she, was, she was powerless, she could no longer read people, she could no longer, she, the enchantment left her. And her owners got mad because they lost a prophet she was making them, because religion is always about profit and not about freedom. Yeah. I noticed he didn't ask her permission. Could I pray for you? <laughs> there was something in that man that understood who he was and what he had been given. And he came to a place where he could really out loud homo legale and cause demons to flee. Wow. Come on. Who wants this? Don't you want this? Don't be happy with your half-baked religion. Now, if you want revival, okay, then go for what I'm saying. Yeah. Do it. Right. Heal the sick, raise the dead, open blind eyes, cause people to come to Christ, make a wave in your community, but become the revival to them. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. You say, oh, how? Well, <clears throat> you have to go to bed earlier. And uh, I know this is offensive to some people, but I have to say Bible. Because the Bible is true. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a lie. A righteous man rises up early. Now you can say, well, I'm a night person. That's the lie Satan fed you. And you really do believe that. And I suggest that you be converted from lies. You say, but I can't sleep. Well, then get up early anyway. And soon enough, you'll sleep. <laughs> Get up. Jesus said, his word says, early will I rise up and seek thee. A righteous man rises early. There's, there are so many scriptures about getting up early. There, you have no defense. So you should know the devil is exposed in your life right now. He lied to you and you believe it. Does that mean you can never stay up late? No. We're talking about a way of life, not a law. That's the difference. We can navigate. You understand? I better read this. So he himself, this is verse 11, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Did he give them? Then we need them. All of them. If we ever needed um, <clears throat> apostles and prophets, it's now. Because the church accepts the other three, but not those two. Do you know that? If you say you're a prophet, you're out of 60 to 80% of all churches would not have you. If you say you're an apostle, 60 to 80% of churches would say that's not true. Oh, no, I'd say it's more like 90. Maybe more. Uh, so Jesus gave these anointings for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Now, how do they equip the saints for the work of the ministry? Well, there's several ways. That's why one of the things I love, like when Jeff ministers or Steve ministers or, or Terry, is they also have their own way in God, and they're imparting different things. They have a different way of imparting different things. So like, uh, Steve, I, you know, you come to me as means pretty soon he's going to have you up here prophesying or, or laying hands on someone because that's the impartation. Um, so people want, who have these anointings, want to get these anointings into other people so that the effectiveness can go out and touch many. Okay? So he's given these, but there's another way he does it too. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ until... We all, can you say we all, all. come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. I'm telling you now, when that happens, you will never again cry out for anything to come. You will stand in maturity in the knowledge of the Son, and you will become God's avenue to your world. You will be an opportunity for God at all times, wherever you go, wherever you are. You can be tired and thirsty at a well and talking to some woman you shouldn't be talking to, and the next thing you know, the whole village gets saved. 
because you are God's opportunity because you know who you are. When you come to the knowledge of the truth, to knowledge of the Son of God, when you come to that knowledge, you become like him. And this is the purpose of these five gifts is to raise the church up to an awareness that's like Jesus had. That's when the earth is full of Christ. He fills all things. That's what we're after. We're not after something that comes for 15 days and goes. We're not after something that lasts for a year and then goes. I had someone say to me one time, I came into that community and brought the power of God. And I was like, I said, well, what are you talking about? And they says, I brought manifestations and the Spirit of God moved and we had for 16 days this massive thing. And he says, and what happened after you left? I don't know, I did my part. I said, well, we've been here for 25 years and we're still pouring it out and we're gonna keep going and all the people we raise up are gonna do it after we're gone. See, the kingdom of God is not a power manifestation for someone's glory. It's an equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry or a gathering of people out of... God wants power to manifest. Amen. Can you shout amen? Amen. So that he can gather the lost to the church so that they can be equipped and cemented into the body of Christ. Every healing, every miracle, every outpouring is for cementing people to the body of Christ. There's no other reason. Do you know that you're going to heal them, get them delivered, and they're going to die? Yeah. Now where's your healing? Rotting in the casket. Yeah. Like, what are you saying? I thought you wanted healings. Yes, but healings have a purpose. Yeah. One, it brings ease to their life and refreshment because they're not under the weight of the sickness, disease, or problem that they had. Okay, that's the temporary. But number two, which is maybe the primary, yeah. is it awakens them that God is with this people. And that draws them like moths to a light to accept Christ and become a part of the people and to grow up and go out and become a light so that other moths come to them now. Because why? God's drawn the whole world to himself. And so when they die, all the healings you gave them are gone and they're all worse off than they were. It's not about healing. It's not even about miracles. It's about being a member of the body of Christ as a son, which is true salvation. That's what it is about. And I, you know, the reason I'm so gripped and persuaded about this is I really believe that's the apostolic anointing in my life. It will not sell out or trade the main thing for something else. And it will not leave out anything for the main thing because the main thing summons us everything. But if you go out and heal the sick, make sure you know what the main purpose is. To gather people to God and to bring temporary relief to their body. Yeah. Yeah. But the main thing is to gather them unto God. If you break a demon off of someone so a stronghold's broken so that they go free, it's so that they can be free enough to see God, to join themselves to God. If they're just a free person in society who never gets saved, it accomplishes nothing. Now they just have less demons while they're living for the devil. Put that where you want it. it. All right, you got a better society, but the purpose is to be joined to God's eternal purpose. Okay, so he says here, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for uh, the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to a what? All right, perfect man, mature man, whatever you want to call it, so that we might be, grow up as a church to become like Christ, That's right. like him. Yeah. That's the whole point. I'm not surrendering that point right. um, <clears throat> to a perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of a spirit-filled Christian who's struggling through life until the rapture comes. No. no. Oh, sorry. It's kind of, there's not very good light here. Let me try that again. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of, 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 of Christ. Wow. Amen. All right. 
So you say, you got big ideas, you got a big head, you got these thoughts. No, actually what I'm thinking is beneath what he's thinking, but as much of it as I can see, I'm trying to present to you so we can, at least we can all get on the right path and start building towards the right thing. Because what God has in mind is Christ, the anointing of Christ being on his church. So wherever we are, wherever we go, people get healed, come to God, get joined to the church, get ingrained in God, and we start planting all kinds of churches everywhere because they are so excited about being a Christian because it changes their lives and it heals their body and it makes room for them before God. And it's not about how to gather people so you can afford a bigger building, or you can get a bigger paycheck, or you can look better, or any of the other rubbish that people try to do it for. The way, you know how God trained me for this? He called me with no money. I thought, oh boy, if I knew what was coming, I would have really swallowed hard. He says, from this day you work for me and not for men. To me, that's like, all right, God's never going to fail me. <laughs> you know, that's it. I mean, I walked out of a really good engineering job, a really good company, and a really good position at that. I really loved working there. But I got a better job. It was receiving from God... So that I can begin to become a part of the solution to the problem that's not changing in the body of Christ. I didn't say the answer. I said part of the answer. Yeah. To become a part of that. To help God's purposes be manifested. So I didn't know that meant, ten, that meant five years with no pay. Yeah, no pay. I was like, all right. Um, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even pray about it. I actually didn't. I just thought. We just got going. I was like, oh. I, was out of there. I remember when I spent my last... What was it? It was, I, I remember where it was. It used to be the giant food store on Robinson Street. And I was walking down the aisle, and Marge says, go get milk and bread. And I had, I can't remember the amount now. It wasn't much, but back then it was more than now. You could buy more, right? So I think it was like $3 or $2.50 or something. And all I know is I grabbed a loaf of white king bread. And I grabbed a gallon of whole milk because in those days, that's what old skinny drank and ate. <laughs> I, and then she took me down to two and then down to one. I said, I don't even like the taste of this stuff anymore. But as I was reaching, it was actually the milk first. I was reaching for the king white bread. There was a whole thing full of it because everybody bought it then. I didn't see any whole grain anywhere. <laughs> as, I, <laughs> as I reached before, I thought, do I have enough money? Cash. And ding, 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 the bell went off in my head. This is all the money I have left. There is no more. As I grabbed the bread and Satan spoke as clear as you can speak to me. Eat, it almost sounds like a cartoon. Eat and drink today because tomorrow you're going to die. I heard him out loud. I heard him. He was messing with my king bread. <laughs> Do you know, I tell you, fear, like a wheelbarrow full, went, whoo, started coming on me. I felt it coming on, and I just went, no! Felt like slow motion to me, the whole thing. I mean, I screamed out loud in the giant. The lady over there was like, <laughs> and I said, no, I will eat and drink. And I got milk and bread according to his riches and glory. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what it means to be bipolar. <laughs> to listen to both voices. I'm not kidding. I don't believe in it. I actually think it is a concocted idea by people who don't know what spirits are to try to figure out why people hear different voices in their head instead of one voice. Everybody hears more than one voice. I got news for you, Mrs. and Mr. Bipolar. We all hear them. It's just we are experts at not revealing it, except for this madman talking about it right now. But I heard him out loud, and I rejected the voice. 
And until you reject the voice of the enemy, you will think you're crazy. In fact, you ought to feed on it. When he talks, I know exactly I'm in the will of God because he always speaks against it. Sometimes I think, should I do this or that? And he's nudging me over to say, oh, thank you. I know exactly what to do. But that lady stood there in her cart. Now, there wasn't much terrorism back then, but I bet you if you did it today, if you put a, a knapsack on, she probably would have been running out of this door. Smile. It's a joke. God didn't tell me that Bev Jones was going to feed me. You know that we renamed Bev the Raven? I don't like beaked meat. I really don't. But you know Elijah ate it for quite a long time until he overcome his fear. Do you know why he was there? Hiding from the prophetess instead of ruling and reigning with Christ. He, we didn't have to have big meat, and neither did he. But at the time, I didn't understand a lot of things. I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to go through this stuff. You can start rising up right now. Amen. Some of you, I probably say to you now, your job is going to go. You're going to quit, and you're going to serve God full time. Some of you in here, you're going you're gonna to serve God full time. You're going to walk away from a paycheck you can't replace, and you're going to do something that's way more valuable. And as you're faithful and do the right thing, then God is going to increase you beyond what you've got there. But in the meantime, you're going to feel like you've lost everything. And I can tell you now, if you take advice and counsel from people who've been there, like myself, you can shorten that time to a very short window. Or you can really start learning right now, applying it. Homologion was God over many, many things that he says. And when you step out, you will step into the realm of God and start speaking to your world, and you will not lack. Amen. So if you're thinking about going full-time for God someday, I suggest you learn to start how to speak to nothing and tell it to become something. And Margie can testify to how many times that miracle happened in our lives with no paycheck for five years. And five guys moved in my house for a year and a half, and we fed them as well. Now, when they came, the, one of them had reminded me, well, we did contribute to, yeah, well, you didn't contribute to the electric bill, to the every other bill, and all the other bills that I had to sit there. And I remember one time the, the whole bill rack started stacking up like this. Because it was just coming and going. There was, it was doing this. You know, I just stuffed the envelopes in this little thing. And when the money came, I'd just pay them. And it, there was various things that would happen. Or people would hand me a couple hundred bucks or whatever. And i just keep it rolling. And this thing started growing. And then one day it got too big for the holder. I was like, oh. what the, could be the, if the, then the, you know, all that stuff starts going off in your head. So I took them. Pulled them all out because they were stuffed because there was too many. And I had a, a bills that thick of letters. And I went into, I said, Marge, she was talking to someone. I go, and we walked in the room. She was what? I says, don't say anything. Just agree with me. Father, I didn't call me into the ministry. You did. <laughs> and I had added all that up right before I called her in there. How much was it? I forgot. Oh, yeah, $1,600. Back then, it was $1.5 million. And <laughs> it's like, oh, you know. We lived in a 960-square-foot house with three kids. And we started working at the cellar, and five guys were with us living down there. So it was, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't pretty. And so I said, Lord, um, we need $1,600, and we need it tomorrow. Now, I don't know why I didn't say today, <laughs> but I said tomorrow. And I said, thanks, son. And she was like, walked out. <laughs> I was just, I've been thinking about what was she thinking. Oh, what did he get us into now? <laughs> I don't know what she was thinking. 
Maybe she had faith. Yeah, show them, Lord. You know, I don't know, whatever. But she walked out. And the next morning, I'm sitting there on the couch. And so knocks on the door. Uh, Chris, uh, I just want to drop this off. They got a big, thick envelope in their hand. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> we didn't tell anybody. And he said, I, I, he said, I just want to drop this off and go. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Uh, I, Margie said I'm mixing up two stories. That's true. And uh, so, I, uh, so he lays down and I said, oh, that's true. No, that was the other time. See, it was a different miracle. The thick envelope was a different time. This was a check. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Because I said, to him, wait, wait, wait. Before you drop this off, you mind staying there while I look at this? I opened it up. It was $1,600. Wow. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that. I said, oh, God, thank you. <sighs> you know, a shiver goes through you. Oh, my gosh, we are spiritual. This can't happen. But I saw a five and overlaid with a six. And he was writing that, and he was writing one to five. You know, he's writing 1,500, and he wrote one, five, and then he oh, changed it to a six. And, and, and I was like, you know, what, what was that? And he says, well, the Lord had told me to give you the money. And, and, uh, and so I was going to give you that much. But he had told me 800 bucks, and then he had told me, double it. And I was trying to wimp out, and then I, I put... <laughs> So I was like, wow. When he left, I was like, my God is an awesome God. <laughs> I was just like, oh, crazy. I was like, you know, but I want you to know, God doesn't want you preaching stuff you don't believe. Now, if you're going to go into ministry, and all of you are in the ministry, because you're witnesses of Christ, then you're going to have to experience this stuff Therefore, you're going to have to trust God through it. All right, parents, a little clue here. Don't always bail your kids out because you're thwarting a miracle. Mm -hmm. I hear it. I tell you. I just told you. Now, Mom, you always want to smooth everything over, and sometimes you're interfering with the plan of God. Stop it. You know, um, it is weird when a man says to his son, Get up and stop crying. And my goes, oh, don't be mean. She will ruin him. He will lift him up. Now, I'm not talking about anger, hatred, wildness, beatings. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a firm, get up, stop crying. And there comes a time for a boy, you can nurture a little girly. But there comes a time for, you say, that's sexist. No, it's Bible. I'm not buying into our social order. I'm not buying it. The word of God is true. And the yeah. earth shall be filled with the glory of God, not of man. It's going to be filled with that. It doesn't mean a woman can't work. But God made women feminine, and they ought not to try to be men. It doesn't look nice. Bible. We want God's will for this world, what he designed, to come to pass. And whatever came against you to damage you or hurt you, it's the job of the ministers to break that spirit off of you. Okay, so don't accept it on yourself. You're supposed to be the light. Get up! Stop crying! Come here, son. No, 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 no. No more whimpering. No, you're fine. Stand up. Don't look at your mother. Look at me. <laughs> hey, look at you. You are a strong man, and you're going to feel more pain than that, and you're going to go through it, and you're going to live. This is when you develop the soul of a man to not fail. That's when you, you teach a young man how to hold a job when he doesn't like it. That's how you teach a young man to stick with his wife when he's attracted to someone else. This is what gets the soul in line with God when other temptations in this world try to draw them away. You're teaching that soul. You're teaching that soul. Now, I know people have not agreed with me in the past. They're wrong. I was right. My girls are worshipers because I did it. And sometimes people's children have walked away from God because you didn't discipline them. 
my girls would act up as little girls and make noise and trouble well, during worship. I took them out, and they went, oh, no. I took them. I was the pastor. I had to walk out of the service. And I says, I told you before, God deserves to be worshiped. You're not causing trouble during church. You're going to pay attention to God. Are you listening to me? Yes. Turn over. Whack. <laughs> they so and said, they're never going to love God if you do that. They love God more than most people I've ever met in my life. It's because you believe the good tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is a lie. Yeah. I believe the truth. I didn't use abuse. I didn't use wickedness. I wasn't mean. I was, well, once in a while. And I wasn't mean and nasty. <laughs> I love them so much, and I had to get their attention because their attention was going to get them in trouble with boys, yep. those evil people. <laughs> Just kidding. I only have sons. Get, let your husband get their eyes. Now, if you don't have a husband, I suggest you find men of God. And don't protect them from them. Let them help them. And they're not going to do it the way you do it, so don't shut them down. I many times told people, men, I usually do it with men, not well, 80s, but I might. But I'll go, you need to start worshiping God. Stop acting like a wimp. Get up and lift your hands to God and quit squirming. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. From then on, they can worship God. Why? Because grandma and mom didn't teach them right. to stand up and be men. I don't like this guy. <laughs> He's demanding change. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't want Satan to rule over my kids, and they don't. Do they make mistakes? Yeah. Do they have trouble sometimes? Yes. But guess what? When they get in a ditch, they come out. Some people go in the ditches and never get out. Why? Because they don't know how to lock on to God and get going. Am I speaking the truth? Yeah. The NFL is starting up. These are some of the most muscular, athletic wimps you'll ever meet in your life. I love what Jesse Duplantis did. You know... They always call ministers to come in, you know, to speak to these guys. You say, where'd the message go? Well, you're going to get it here somewhere. Yeah. It's in what I'm saying. Yeah. I feel it. Go on with it. Yeah. Amen. So, um, so the ministers come in, and they'll say, faith is the way, and you're going to overcome, and they'll preach. And the next day comes in, and he goes, you've got to have backbone and spine and pains there, but we overcome the pain. And, you know, they come in with these strong preachers to get them going. And then right at the end of their message, they go, and I have this uh, orphanage. I want you guys to all donate money. Get your checkbooks out, and then all these big, rich football stars so the kicker gives $25, and, uh, <laughs> but everybody else, $2,500, <laughs> and the quarterback has to give, you know, $25,000 <laughs> money. And then the next guy comes in, and the next guy comes in, and they're taking offerings all the time for their pet projects. Yeah. Jesse Duplantis had a touchdown. I wanted to scream for joy. I just haven't turned him on. I don't watch him. I haven't watched him in three years. Oh, he's not on anymore? Okay, but anyway. Yeah, we're on time order. They don't believe in Jesus. And uh, all right, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> Some people there do. Okay. Tim's good. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Tim Bellavia is moving back into the area. He used to work there. So. Proof that God moves. All right. So um, Jesse Duplantis goes there, and they're all like, all right, give us our pep rally, and then get our checkbooks. They get their checkbooks ready. And then when he gets to that point, he goes, and I don't want any of your money. I have 10 times more money than any of you, all you put together. Yeah. And they're all like, he says, they all sat up. They're all looking at him like, what is this? That's me. I'm no beggar. You're no beggar. 
Don't beg. Don't beg. I'm going to give a little suggestive hint that I really could use. What's on there? Oh, yeah. Margie's telling me something I skipped. Good spot for it. Sometimes people come into the church and they'll ask you for money. Don't give it to them. We are not creating a beggar group here. Stop giving money to the people who ask for it. If someone asks you for money, come see me. I'll tell you whether you should or not. Yeah. Because they're asking everybody else to, and they're going home with a nice little wad in their pocket. Yeah. There's abusers in our society. Yeah. Come on. Now, if you're moved upon to give, go for it. Yeah. But if someone's over here asking you for money, I don't like it. No. So you know what's going to happen? You're training them to go to new people who are going to come here, and they're going to offend them. Yeah. Oh, the church is asking me for money. It's so weird. No, that's my job to ask them for money. <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. Did you notice? Did you notice? I said to the new people, if you're new, please let the offering go by. Right. I'm not trying to get money from anybody new. I'm not. I did. They're here to hear the word of God, and that's great. No beggars. No beggars. If you're asking for money, stop it. Yes. Right. I got this, this vacation crowd here right now, so you see it happening, you have my permission to tell someone, stop it. Yes. You don't ask for money here. Right. You go talk to the pastors. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, here it says, Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to land here. Till we all come to the unity of the faith, unto the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now I can assure you, the job of an evangelist is to gather and release power so that souls can come to God. For sure, that's one of the main things of the gift of an evangelist. And one of the other things is to train and to equip people to do the same thing. Amen. That is the primary purpose. The primary purpose of an evangelist is not to create the move of God. The church is the move of God. The church is the move of God. All right, so if you've got a church that doesn't have a move of God, then we need evangelists there to create the move of God? No. They can't do it. They cannot do it. They're not anointed to do it. They can release power in that church, but the move of God will die in that church because it takes teaching, training, right doctrine, and founding, and a cementing of people in the truth of God's word because it's his word that produces kingdom. And then we have the evangelists train them in the impartation of miracles and signs and wonders and going out on the street and doing these things. No, it it doesn't come after. It's on the way. It's a part of it. But we have to start using the right gifts for the right thing. Um, Andre said to me, well, what's your expectation of this trip? I said, it's real simple. Don't leave anything uh, don't take anything with you. Leave it here. Which I know is his whole MO. I was, in part. In part. When you're teaching, in part. When you're speaking, in part. Stir the gift in the people so that they have a reality of the prophetic in their lives. Your job is to bring the word of the Lord that helps direct the church, but also to impart to the people so that they have an ability to flow in the prophetic so that when they're on the streets or they're at work or whatever, they get a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, and they can learn how to develop a relationship with God by taking God to the movies like you did so that they can learn how to hear God and that person at work who's stubborn and insolent and is self-willed and nobody can ever touch him, and you go... From heaven. This is what God showed me about your life. And they can't dispute it. Or who told you that? Do you know how many times in this church people come to me and say, I can't believe you told that minister about me. I said, well, that's what's funny. I didn't. 
And it's funny how you still don't believe that the Holy Spirit's real. They'd rather blame me for telling them. I says, if that's true, then the miracle is that he could remember specifics about everybody in our church. <laughs> well, he's good. Now, there's this lady. She's going to come with her hair up in a bun. She's probably wearing a, a pink shirt this week. Uh, when she comes in, make sure you address her about this. Yeah, come on. I've met all of you over and over, and some of you still can't say your name. <laughs> all right, so he says, unto a perfect man, to the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. Here it is, verse 14, that we, can you include yourself? Can you say me? We should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about. Demons will lift you out of where you belong and carry you if you let them. And carried about by every wind of doctrine. So here's what I'm trying to say to you today. Whatever doctrine you or I believe that is not according to God's word is carrying us where we ought not to go. true, right? So look, sometimes there's ministers going to come here and they're going to say things that are different than what I say. Just relax. You guys are going, oh, I can't believe he just said that. We don't believe that. We aren't offended by anything. In fact, when we say something wrong and they hear it, they must be like, they want to treat us the same way. Maybe there's something we don't see yet. We just respect, honor, don't worry about it. It all comes out in the wash. Yeah, yeah, don't don't get uptight. I have said though from the front row sometimes you can't hear me. I go, actually that's not true, and they kind of hear me and they're like, because they're professionals. That's when they walk. So, anyway, the Lord, and you hear the same language anyway. And then they veer away from that subject. Because if they're going into land that I think is destructive, I'm not letting them go there. But I'm kind to them. I whisper, and they hear me. It's like, so if you ever see someone lock up for a second. <laughs> because we are, and then later on they'll say, well, you said, and I, 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 I mean, I respected that, but what about... And I say, well, that's Old Covenant, and that's for Israel, or that's this, and that's that. And then that's when I have a chance to then bring them through the Word and take them through, and then you can go, I never heard that before. Exactly. Come on, let's go. What else don't you know? Let's get on board. If you can help me, help me. So it says, not carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love. That's the key. We're not just speaking the truth. We're speaking the truth in love. So if you're argumentative, that's not the truth being spoken in love. Don't be argumentative. We don't have to fight for what we believe. If you believe the word, the word is so powerful, they can't wrestle it out of your hand. I have peacefully disarmed the devil so many times in people's lives without getting rung up. They're rung up sometimes. I say, well, okay, but the Bible says, but the Bible says. Do you know I have a growing number of people calling me from out of the state or out of the country wanting to know doctrinal questions? It's because there's confusion. The reason there's life in this church is because we've departed from a lot of doctrines and we've embraced the Bible. And we're going to keep doing it as God keeps revealing it. Now, so I remember last year, uh, Andre taught about the rabbi. There was some good stuff there. There was some gems and nuggets. And, and uh, sometimes when Steve's teaching on the anointing and he's talking about realms and how to release that, I'm thinking, whoa, did they hear that? It's like so awesome. It's like, it's like pure vein of gold. And I think we have to take these things as they come. You can hear Jeff Martin. The man knows something about the glory of God. He, 
He knows something about the glory of God. And in fact, his church was called the glory house. But there's something he knows, and he feels it around him. You can see him. He touches it. He knows how to touch it quickly. And I think that as people have these gifts, you know, Tim, can I just say, Tim Haller, sometimes he's splitting cords of wood out of heaven, man. I mean, it's like his tongue is going like a hatchet, and there's logs turning into firewood. It's like cordwood. I mean, it's just like he's breaking things, and... It's truth. That's not something I taught him. I taught him. All right, he's my son of faith. That's true. But he's not sucking it out of my thumb. He's getting it from Jesus. It's like it trans- transitioned from knowledge and importation of man to God. And when that thing comes, it arrests something inside of you. That's what equips. I'm telling you, when he's down there teaching in Rome, some people are going to go, what does that young man have? Yeah, it's awesome. So we don't want to be carried by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, the cunning craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Can you say grow up? up. In all things in him who is the head, Christ. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm.